website's ready to go. All you need to do is show it to people. So, let's see. You want to set up some chairs, schedule show times, sell tickets, or you could just put it on the internet, I guess. But how do you do that? First, you need a place to put your website online. We refer to this as your web space, your own personal homestead on the internet. Your web space exists on a server, a computer that's hooked up to the internet all the time. Unless you have your own server, you'll probably need to get some web space from a web hosting service. A web host is a company that provides server space and other web services to people who don't have their own servers. It's like renting an apartment in a large building. You can store any files you'd like in, into the space and tell people the address so that they can stop by and take a look. There are plenty of companies online that would be happy to host your website. Some will even do it for free. But there's a catch. Most free web hosting services will add some sort of banner ads to your website to pay for the cost of the servers. Banner ads are advertisements placed at the edges of your page. They can be a web designer's worst enemy, flashy and distracting. Also, some free web hosts will have restrictions on how many visitors you can have per day. And the web space provided will be smaller than what's offered by the web host that you pay for. However, if you don't want to pay for web hosting, free web hosts are a good, reliable option. And if you're unsure about whether or not your website is going to work out, you won't risk any money. Some popular free web hosts include GeoCities, Tripod, and for students and teachers, Think.com. If you're willing to pay for web hosting, that's great, but you shouldn't rush into that decision. Before you go purchase web hosting, you might want to check with your ISP and find out if any web space is included with your internet service plan. Most large ISPs like AOL or MSN will have some sort of basic service provided and ready for you to use. The important things to know about any potential web host are how much server space and how much bandwidth they provide. Server space refers to the amount of disk space you'll have on the server to store all your files. Most web hosts will provide at least 100 megabytes of space, which is more than enough, but check with yours just to be sure. If there are only 5 or 10 megabytes available, that might not be enough. Bandwidth is the rate at which data is transmitted over the Internet. With web hosting, bandwidth refers to how fast your web host will transmit your website to a visitor's computer. Because bandwidth is not unlimited, your web host will often restrict how much web traffic your website can receive in a given time period. Free web hosts like GeoCities will limit the amount of bandwidth you can use in one day. If you have a lot of small files but a ton of visitors, or a few big files with an average amount of visitors, you run a risk of running out of bandwidth. Sites that stream video often run out of bandwidth because the files are so big. If you do hit your bandwidth limit, visitors won't be able to access your website or you'll be charged with higher fees. So it's important to make sure that you'll have enough bandwidth to cover your needs. Usually, though, the average amount of bandwidth is more than enough. Some popular and professional web hosts are Yahoo, Vario, DreamHost, and Lunar Pages. Depending on your web hosting needs, you can pay a very small amount of money, a few dollars a month maybe, for a small amount of services. However, like with so many other things, you can also pay slightly more for better features. Many will offer extra services, such as email hosting, technical support, server backup and restoring, and site visitor statistics. Some web hosts might even include the cost of registering your domain name. A domain name is the address of your web server, the word or words in between www. and .com or .org. Owning your own domain name means taking a big step onto the web, so we'll go over it a little more later on. If you decide not to buy a domain name, 
your website can use the domain name of the server it's being hosted on. Say you are being hosted by Nortel Learned and your username was student. The URL for your webpage might be www.nortellearned.org slash student. If you want to host your own website on your own computer, it is possible. However, it involves turning your computer into a web server. There's a lot to learn about making your computer a server, but for now, just know that your computer will have to be able to always stay connected to the internet at all times. You'll also have to set up your computer with a static IP address. This is the numeric address that identifies a server on the internet. A static IP address never changes. This is a pretty complicated process, so you can see why people rent server space for their websites. But if you have a Windows or Linux machine, it's an option you might consider at some point. For simple sites like the portfolio site we will be creating, all you really need is some basic web space. A free web host might be just fine. But it's important to keep your options open. Sure, today you're just putting your portfolio online, but tomorrow you could be launching your very own dot-com empire. It's the internet after all. Things move pretty fast.